my name is Ashton Culp, and I interview Joe Whiteford of the band Harley Poe about his life with music and how Harley Poe came to be and where the band is now. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Joe Whiteford. I am... I'm Joe Whiteford. <laughs> I don't, I don't know Okay, uh, how I got started. I think uh, just when I was a teenager, I just started playing acoustic guitar, and um, I just wanted to write songs. And at that point, I was a Christian, and I wanted to write um, Christian songs. I had a lot in my mind about what I thought it meant to be a Christian. And so um, I started writing songs uh, about my issues and my whatever, my, my concerns with the world. I think right after high school, I formed a band called Calibre 13 with a friend and a, um, a friend of my then girlfriend. And uh, we started Calibre 13. We were um, a Christian punk band. We got signed to Tooth and L Records. And that was the beginning of music. That was the beginning of music, like playing music and playing shows. Um, before that, I'd play like local shows with my acoustic guitar, but we started doing the band thing and got, got signed and started touring. And um, at that point, I was really into the Violent Femmes and really into them. Um, I, I got interested into, in the Dead Milkmen and the Dickies shortly after the band started because people, bands we'd go on tour with said, you sound a lot like these bands. So I, that, that kind of introduced me to punk rock. I didn't really know that much about punk rock until I, I started this band. And um, we were on Tooth & Nail Records, so it was like a, a punk label, a Christian punk label. And that was my introduction to like punk rock music, MXPX and 90 Pound Wuss and Goaty Hook. So that lasted from, I think we started Calibretto 13, for, it's like 1998, a year after high school, into 2001 and then we broke up. And then, that, and then 2001 is when I started Harley Poe. I was already writing Harley Poe songs and coming up with the idea for Harley Poe on probably, probably one of the last tours of Calibretto. Calibretto before because I could we were disbanding I could see it happening we weren't getting along as much and I wanted to do other things I wasn't a, a believer in that faith anymore I wanted to write about different things and I was just tired of um, playing youth groups and uh, just was you know I was just growing up and becoming a different person and so that was the beginning of, of music it's always different it's always different I don't think I all, I ever do the same thing when it comes excuse me when it comes to writing. Um, it just depends, you know, and even recording too, and the, the vibe that I want when we're in this, the studio or if we're, um, if we're recording live, my favorite way to record is just sitting down with two mics, one on my guitar and one on my vocals, and just, uh, um, just going and playing it simultaneously. But there's been times we use click track and we've just like laid the drums down, then the bass. So it's always been different, recording and writing. Um, Sometimes I'll have all the ideas fleshed out. Sometimes I'll have just the song and I'll have an idea or, and I'll just, you know, depending on who I'm working with, I'll say, what do you got for this? You got, a, you got a, some cool ideas. The first album, like I said, was um, the guys from Calibretto, Christopher Thomas and Chad Serhal and uh, CJ Sutton. He did mandolin, um, Serhal did bass and Christopher did um, brushes on a kit. They were only helping me out. They weren't really going to keep doing it with me. And then Christopher left, and then Christian Raquelme, who's been playing with me for a long time, uh, he joined up on the second album, which isn't really an album. It's, uh, it's um, The Dead and the Naked, and it was like a more of an EP, and then a, like a, a house show. At that point, uh, Ryan Freeman, my, bass, my first bass player, had left the band, and it was just Christian Raquelme and I just playing shows, just the two of us. We did Dead and the Naked, and then we did Harley Poe and the Dead Vampires, which was a split EP or a split album. So Wretched Filthy was such um, a, a, like a punk album. It was, it was a cocktail kit at that point. And at that point, we were on Chain Smoking Records. He, um, Anthony Fanger had gotten a hold of me and wanted to put out albums, so I said, yeah. And so we put out Wretched Filthy Ugly through him, and that um, album took like two years to do because um, I started going to school, I was working at Starbucks full time, and uh, we were, my wife and I were having children. So um, I kind of put the band down, and we just kind of recorded on weekends when we could in Brazil, Indiana with John Hook, who also recorded In the Dark and The Dead Vampires Split. So anyway, after we did Wretched Filthy Ugly, which was more of a, a, a band feel, 
I just kind of freaked out and said, no, I need to go do my own thing. So I booked time to go record Satan Sex No Regrets. So I went by myself and I was planning to have the band, um, End Time Spasm Band as my backup band. I was planning on asking them to do stuff. Cause I wanted to do, I wanted to sound a little bit different. I wanted a break from the people I've been working with because I, I don't think I get along with people very well for a long time or I just need to go be by myself. I don't really know what my problem is. So I did that out, I did those songs. So I had everybody come back in the studio and that's why it's very stripped down very raw because I knew I still wanted it to feel like it was a, a solo album. And that's why I, that's me on the cover. And it's mostly just, it's guitar and, and um, just me. And then a little bit of, you know, hear the upright bass, uh, very few backup vocals. Um, even though I think the Git Joe was a, a huge influence on that sound for that album. And I think it, it made it, it's, it's what gives that album its sound. It's it's creepy, and I think Wes Plantinga did a great job. That was our last, oh, we did um, Man of God EP on chain smoking. And after that, Whorehound um, Magazine, Whorehound Convention, Whorehound Weekend, uh, they were starting a record label, and they wanted to put out a Harley Poe album because um, I had been going to the conventions and passing out um, Harley Poe CDs that were on chain smoking and standard recording. They had called me and asked if Harley Poe wanted to play, and then the rest is just us, like, working with Whorehound for a few years. And then there was a big uh, jump in Harley Post popularity, probably because of Whorehound Magazine. So the ne next, thing we, next thing we did was Pagan Holiday. At that point, we were, I was considering, this is, these, are, these are the people I'm playing with, this is more of a band feel too. We were making, we had band meetings, doing band making band decisions and stuff. And we decided to do the Seven Inches of Hell. And at that time I was also getting divorced. It was all, all at once. So my wife's leaving and um, I'm not talking to the band. I'm writing while we're doing the Seven Inches of Hell. I'm in my studio just like randomly just recording songs on my cell phone with my acoustic guitar. Cause I didn't want to pay for studio time and I didn't know what I was doing. And so I'm just like randomly, you know, recording songs. And so um, I decided to put that out as Fallen Down. I almost didn't call Harley Poe because I, I was, you know, I was trying to show my wife that I'm, I'm quitting Harley Poe. <laughs> but, you know, I, ultimately I just couldn't do it. <laughs> In the end, I, I, you know, that's what, that was how I decided to do, that was, that was, that was my solo project. You know, that was my stage name. I didn't want to start over again. I didn't want to, oh, I'm going to do another stage name, but it was solo again. You know, it's going to, it's going to sound like everything else I've done. So I put out, I put out Fallen Down after we had disbanded. Then it was over for a while. And then I met um, Jamie Johnson who I worked with her at Starbucks and um, a Books A Million. I worked with her at a couple jobs while I was married. And she used to party with my wife and I and our friends. And so I've kn she was an old friend. I knew her for a long time. And at that point I was writing Lost and Losing It. I was trying not to do music anymore. I was trying to write Christian music again because I was getting involved in church. I was pursuing, you know, because I, I met my wife through Christianity. And so I was losing her and thinking that the way I can get her back is finding my faith again, losing, ditching Harley Poe and just changing my life. Because at that point I was getting very depressed. I mean, we, we weren't working out anymore. So that was, it was, it was time to, it was really just time to end. We were changing, we were different people. And um, I was becoming, uh, I think just, Harley Post started off kind of funny, kind of silly, and it, it was getting a little darker, I thought, and I was, my life was getting darker. Art, I drew since I was a small child, I liked drawing. And, um, and that goes way back before I can remember, I was always drawing. <laughs> that was the beginning of that, <laughs> I guess. I am. Um, when I first started Harley Poe, I knew I wanted Harley Poe to be about um, the music and about the art. Maybe more so even about the art. The, the first um, Harley Poe album came with a book of poetry and illustration, and I knew I wanted them to go hand in hand. And over time, uh, I, I, I just kind of, it got easier just to write albums and not, you know, have a whole collection of artwork with these albums. And it became more of a a band feel later on so it was just like let's just put albums out and um, recently I really pursued the art aspect of Harley Poe again with the, the new album I'm working on now and a couple years ago I started really getting into illustrating more stickers and more t-shirts so um, I think I've returned to a, a way to express myself not just through music but through illustration. And... Joe Whiteford and his music have been a large inspiration for the punk community and he, alongside bands like AJJ, Mischief Brew, and Amigo the Devil, helmed the folk punk movement. My name is Ashton Cole, and this has been my interview with Joe Whiteford.